No, it's time to start telling the truth about sin, especially the truth about sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is fun. It's stimulating. It's exhilarating for a season. For a season. Listen to what Solomon said in Proverbs 5, verses 3 and 4. For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and smoother than oil is her speech, but in the end... She is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Solomon is saying that bait that looks so appealing and so attractive, and don't forget, there is a hook in the middle of it that will cost you your life. Fallacy number four leads people into sexual immorality. It's the wrong thought that, well, I can stop anytime I want. I can stop anytime I want. You see, the problem with sexual immorality and any kind of sin is not only is it pleasurable, it is also addictive. Sexual immorality is very addictive. But Satan doesn't want you to know that. In fact, since the beginning of time, Satan has been dangling this lie in front of us that says sin leads to freedom. Isn't that the line he tried on Eve in the garden and it worked? He said, Eve, this tree that God has told you you can't eat of, he said you can eat of any other tree except this one. The reason God doesn't want you to eat of this tree is because he don't, doesn't want you to experience the exhilaration, the happiness that you deserve. If you will simply disobey God in this area, you can have the freedom you deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, sin never leads to freedom. It leads to slavery. The reason we fall into sin, first of all, is because of the wrong thoughts we have about God. We think God is some cosmic killjoy who doesn't want us to have a good time. And so we fall for the line of Satan that says, if you really want to experience exhilaration, disobey this stop sign, this boundary that God has put into effect. But what we find is that sin, it doesn't lead to freedom. It leads to slavery. The fact is you cannot sin just a little bit and stop. Stop. 